tells the parable of the great banquet. He's got a whole bunch of people watching him at this meal. How is this itinerant preacher from Nazareth going to conduct himself? And he tells them, hey, when you're invited to a banquet, don't invite people that can invite you back. That's just some sort of uh, uh, narcissistic reciprocity. No, invite those who can't pay you back, those who are in need. Don't take the places of highest honor when you show up for things. Humility. You think about it in the, litur the liturgy, just as we start Mass five times in the penitential act and in the Gloria, we ask for God's mercy. Why? Because we need to humble ourselves before our God. We need to humble our, we sin, we make mistakes. Humbling ourselves. You know, it's not necessarily thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less, right? Sometimes we think we're humble if we look down on ourselves. I remember talking to my doctor about this probably six, seven years ago, and he says, when we look down on ourselves, on the handiwork of God, he says, we, we put ourselves above what God thinks of us, because God, he loved us into being. And he says, that's idolatry, Father. And uh, he's a very passionate, daily, going Catholic, daily mass going Catholic man. Humility, thinking of ourselves less. When I think of a lack of humility, I, I go back to some of our seminary days. You know, if you want to know anything about the church, just ask a seminarian. I mean, I mean, we were in classes with these guys. I mean, Father Shea and I, we came through at different times, but we share our war stories about those who tried to impress cardinals and so forth. When they would come to visit, they'd stand up and ask these questions. Uh, Father Shea had, uh, uh, what we both did, had uh, Cardinal Arinze visit the seminary. Very outspoken, intelligent churchman. And these seminarians would speak up, kind of trying to make themselves some sort of status by saying something intellectual. And it was interesting, one of the stories that Father Shea said, he, Cardinal just, he said, you know, hey, we're, we're not really talking about this subject right now. Let's keep the subject at hand before us. Uh, you're, you're taking us afield. And I remember, <clears throat> I think we were in the library at Mount Angel Seminary, and the, some of the seminarians were congregating around the computer terminals that we had there in the seminary. And one of the priests from Seattle was there working on the, the computer. And, you know, these topics, I mean, it, the conversation among seminarians, it's just not, it's just not normal. Just not normal. And they, they were talking about, and I think about this tonight as we celebrate the vigil mass. And some of these seminarians are so smart, they're like, no, no, the vigil mass should only be for people that can't go to Sunday mass. That's what it's for. And Father humbly looked up from his computer terminal and he says, yeah, can you point to a single church document that says that? Nothing, nothing. And then I think of what's been recently posted on Facebook. There is a parish up in the Archdiocese of Portland where Mount Angel Seminary is, and this priest has taken the pastorate there, and I don't know how long he's been there. He appears to be a very humble man. He is Nigerian, and he did his formation, and now he's working in the parish. And the parish, is, from all appearances, had some very unusual shepherds beforehand because the liturgy was just way, way out there. So he's slowly trying to rein people in, and they are flipping out. They are flipping out. They're petitioning the bishop and all this, and you're like, he's just doing what the instructions of the church say for Mass. And they're walking in protest, saying, chanting this phrase from the Civil Rights March in the 50s, we will overcome. Your pastor is African. <laughs> humility. Humility. Why does God want us to be humble? 
is because he's God and we aren't? No. He showed us in Jesus Christ, the, I think, part of the reason why we need to be humble is to be happy. The people that I know that are very proud, very narcissistic, very arrogant, they might appear to be happy, but I really don't think they are. I really don't think they are. To be happy, right? I talked about this in the bulletin several months ago. I used Father Spitzer's four levels of happiness. First level is instant gratification. Second level is self-aggrandizement, self-accomplishment. And he says that leads to a very, very, very low level of happiness. If you want to go beyond that, help others. That's the third level, help others. If you are unhappy, ask yourself, am I helping others? Are others better off because I am here? And the fourth level focuses on the transcendent. That's the happiest level. The happiest people in the world are the people that are focused on the transcendent, getting themselves to the hereafter and helping others get there too. Help others. Thinking of myself, not less of myself, but my, less of myself less and helping others. There is a possible basic formula uh, to move from pride, that which makes us unhappy, to that which can make us happy. Humble ourselves before the Lord. This is the message. Thinking of ourselves less. <laughs>